Please hang up and try again. Network broadcasting from the Lucas Oil Studios, driven by General Tire. It's Speed Freaks Motorsports Radio redefined with Kenny Sargent. We love to party. Crash Gladys. What are we doing for the bachelorette party? And Stepman. I am serious. Here's the Freaks. Freak Nation, coming up in the next two hours, your winner from Talladega, Tyler Reddick, will be joining us here in the Freak Nation. Michael McDowell, who sat on the pole and who, frankly, should have won that damn thing on Sunday, he'll be joining us here in the Freak Nation. Jesse Love, who got his first win in the Xfinity Series, running for RCR, flying those Lucas Oil colors. He won Talladega, and again, he will be here in the Freak Nation. And Crasher, what a busy weekend for you. You've got Scott Dick, Scott Dixon. And Bander Snagan, Menagan, Menag Bacon, Menock and Bacon. Bringer, come on, Menock and Bacon, come on. Yep. Bringer Vander Zandy, yes, co driver with Sebastian Bourdais, a freak fave. And Ringer's just an awesome dude as well. So I actually caught up with both of them yesterday. Interview had some audio issues. Caught up with Ringer again this morning. Sebastian Bourdais was. Actually, who is, who is Ranger? Why, are you, why are you interviewing these guys? Well, hold on. Let me get to the story here. Sebastian okay. Bourdais, who is a multi-time cart champion in his own right, he was actually driver coaching today. So I could not catch back up with him, but I did with his co-driver, Ranger Vanner Zandy, Ranger taking the checkered flag yesterday as his job duties in the IMSA race at the Long Beach Grand Prix. Was that strange not hearing the roar of Trans Am there? A step man and I have heard for many, many years here in Trans Am, roll down uh, Long Beach. There were several of us talking about that this weekend. It's weird not having the celebrity race. Of course, Trans Am and the celebrity race have been gone for a little bit now, the celebrity race longer. But yes, it's... <laughs> This yeah. is a this is a weekend that's been the celebrity race, Trans Am. But it's cool to see the stadium super trucks, those guys jumping over, I don't even know what you want to call these berms in on the front straight down Lakeshore Boulevard in, in, at the Long Beach Grand Prix. That's pretty wicked cool. But I do miss the celebrity race. I do miss the Trans Am series. Statman, nothing like hearing the roar of those big boys of Trans Am down uh Shore Boulevard. <laughs> Shoreline. Uh Shoreline. Line. Yeah, I mean it's it's wonderful. Of course, we go back to you know the beginning of the show was the Long Beach Grand Prix, and it's wonderful to hear all those engines bouncing off the high rises and and all of that stuff. You know, the whole thing about Long Beach, though, I still maintain are the parties, and you know the Trans Am race is just background for a good time. So Crasher is still hanging out in Long Beach. I was uh, Talladega Friday and Saturday back in the home studio. Richard C. Suave sitting in the number two seat, Statman in Columbus. Go ahead, Crasher. Surprisingly, I was telling Jess this. Jess has been working with us all weekend. I was telling Jess with MAV-TV that I'm surprised the party vibe atmosphere that I remember from the Long Beach, Long Beach Grand Prix 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 20. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, okay. is not there. It's still a great crowd, but it's not the raucous, spill your beer, get crazy at the concert type of crowd that it used to be back in the day. And I'm okay with that. It's still a massive crowd, but it's not as crazy as it used to be in the past. I think we found that happy medium now that this is what all Grand Prix should be. Well, I could just say this, that uh, the crazy headed to Alabama and the infield at Talladega <laughs> You was, had him. was exceptional. The fire jumping exhibition over furniture was spectacular. Was that official part what? of the program or just some people in the grandstand lit a fire and see who could jump over it? No, stat man, it was scheduled. I understand there were some, according to NASCAR chasm, that there were some Olymp Olympic executives in there. Look, badminton's part of the Olympics, and I'm with NASCAR chasm. Is why not make this fire jumping over furniture? 
part of the Olympics. Hell, we got the Olympics coming up. <laughs> Talladega would win hands down. We would beat the bejesus out of every freaking country on the planet if we let Talladega go up there, take care of business. If, if we still had Bernie Mac, he was he made millions talking about <laughs> there is some furniture moving around here. Right. Tyler Reddick, who I can promise you, if you're watching this, you did not think Tyler Reddick was going to win that race at Talladega. You did not think he was going to win it. You thought it was between a Ford, a Ford, and a Ford, right? And Michael McDowell came up, came down, and lo and behold, Michael McDowell was not your winner. It was Tyler Reddick and Tyler Reddick talking about the madness that is that final lap at Talladega. I was in bad shape going into turn one. I was not liking what I was seeing. I was like, oh, no, it's slipping away. And uh, that ended up being the very thing that, you know, allowed me to break through and, and win the race. Uh, you know, Michael and, and Brad and Noah were all pushing well, and then they come off four with, with a good gap to the outside lane. So, right, they're going to battle for it. And uh, that ended up being the very thing that allowed me to to break through. I had some momentum, but not enough to, to win the race. Uh, but when Michael and, and Brad got crossed up, I mean, it slowed Brad down just enough that I was breaking through and I was just looking at the lights on the, on the wall, on, on the catch fence. I'm like, when is the caution going to come out? I was, I was worried it already had. Um, but to be honest, I still haven't gotten an answer. I don't know if I crossed the line first or if the caution came out before I got there, but obviously we won the race. So that was, um, man, it was, it was nuts. Tyler Reddick, congratulations on that win. Statman, what he was describing was happening in seconds, but it took him about 60 seconds to describe that last turn coming out of turn four at Talladega. Exactly. I mean, and he shouldn't have won. And I think he knows that. Uh, but Michael McDowell, uh, all the blocking and everything, I, I've argued against that for years uh, in NASCAR. And more damage is done, it seems, than uh, anything else. Uh, but Michael McDowell should have won that. He led the most laps, including uh, everything but the last one. And, uh, wow, I mean, it just, I felt so bad for him mm -hmm. uh, to lose control of the car and spin out, bouncing over the wall, and I think he ended up 14th or 16th or something. It was just sad. But like Tyler you say, Reddick. yes, he should have won that race, but he should not have come down a 45-degree banking as, at those speeds and the rate that he did. He knows better. I know he was trying to protect his lead. He was trying to go for the win, and I get that, and you want to win at Talladega, but he shouldn't have made that move. He, he was not 100% clear of Tyler Reddick. His spotter should have been telling him that. He shouldn't have come down the banking like that, bottom line. He gave it away. Yeah, yeah. The other issue in that, and I may be wrong in this because I don't understand all that happens in NASCAR, but the uh, the thing that if you stay up top, you don't have to bind the engine. You stay on top of the power band, and uh, more times than not, you're going to beat the guy at the bottom to the flag, just like Daniel Suarez did uh, earlier this year. Uh, I, but again, I'm not the first person you should call when you want to know some NASCAR. But you're basically agreeing. He should have stayed up top, had that yeah. momentum ride him through it. He probably would have, McDowell, we're talking about Michael McDowell, he probably would have gone through and taken the line first. Yes. Richie, yeah. as a residential millennial, that was a drastic move, even from your standpoint, watching Michael McDowell go up and come down. <laughs> Uh, towards the yellow line like he did, right? Yeah. Right? Can I can I read the tweet I put out from the Speed Freaks account on, on, on Twitter? Because I had some people disagreeing with it, but this is all I said was this. Um, all I said was uh, McDowell went full bleep it mode, didn't he? Question mark. <laughs> he did. Well, as, as you'll hear in this yes. interview with Michael McDowell, listen, they're not a, a billion dollar sponsored team. You got to take it when you can get it. I'm not saying he was right. I'm not saying he was wrong. But front row motorsports, it's not, I almost said Ganassi, it's not Hendrick. It's not Joe Gibbs. It's front row motorsports where it's him and Todd Gilliland. So you got to take it where you can get it. Somehow they find the speed on those super speedways uh, above and beyond what 
some of these other billion dollar sponsored teams are doing. Well, but. hold on though. It's not just somehow on the super speedways. Front row has stepped things up this year. I mean, I know their their alliance. God, who's their alliance with? Is it Penske? Is it Penske? Okay, so there you go. That's a big assist. They have their game is is up to this year. This win would have made it would have vaulted it even farther. So I get all of that is going on in his mind in split seconds, and he can see the finish line mm -hmm. right ahead of him. But damn it, that, that that move destroyed that win. I'm very happy for Tyler Reddick, but yeah, this was Michael McDowell's, and he gave it away. It was awesome to see Michael Jordan there celebrating with Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick with all the swag of Michael Jordan wrapped around that core. Reddick talking about MJ and the celebrations. Yeah, I mean, for him, he's he's come to a few races, and unfortunately, even as good as the days have looked, they've they've not ended in victory lane. So for us to, uh, to uh, win a race like that, be up front as much as we were at the end, and it looked like he was slipping away, and then we get it back, man, it's... Uh, it's an unreal feeling. So, yeah, it's just it's it's great. You know, I'm really excited that I was able to do it. But I my excitement level would not change whether it was me or Bubba that they got him to victory lane when he was here at the track. Um, he means a lot to everyone here at 2311, and he makes a big effort to talk to me, talk to Bubba, talk to Denny, talk to Steve, talk to other individuals at the team, and pump us up when we need it. And so. Just having Michael Jordan tell me anything, I'm at his beck and call. Freak Nation, Crash Gladys, Pit News and Notes, Michael McDowell coming up. Scott Dixon, your winner from the Long Beach Grand Prix, will be joining us here in the Freak Nation. Speaking of Michael McDowell, he'll be joining us sometime in the show uh, regarding that big old poll that he got for Talladega. More Freaks coming up. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. One of the main reasons for poor vehicle performance is a dirty fuel system. It can cause decreased fuel economy and actually do harm to your engine over time. By adding Lucas Fuel Treatment to your vehicle, it cleans and lubricates the entire fuel system. Pump, carburetors, fuel injectors, and valves as you drive. It also improves your vehicle's performance. It's a non-solvent product designed to protect both gasoline and diesel engines. Lucas Fuel Treatment. It works. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April, four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire over 20 years with the freaks and of course, General Tire delivers the weekend racing is over or is it not on math tv monday is all american racing night on the network which never leaves the track sit back and enjoy grassroots red white and blue racing from america's most iconic tracks whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt math tv's monday night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four-wheel battlegrounds monday night is all american racing only on math tv motorsports network the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. Life can be full of risks. One thing you shouldn't take a risk with ever is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or you now need affordable health insurance, you need to make this free call right now and see how the health insurance helpline can help you get it. We specialize in helping the self-employed and people just like you that need affordable health insurance to get it. We have short and long-term health insurance plans and some even cover dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Don't take a risk with your family's health insurance. It's not worth it. 
worth it? If you're self-employed or now need affordable health insurance, call right now and learn for free how to get it. Listen, affordable health insurance plans for everyone just like you are a free phone call away. So give us a shout right now. 800-659-7540. 800-659-7540. 800-659-7540. That's 800-659-7540. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. You're back with Speed Freaks, Freak Radio Network, and on MAV TV. This segment brought to you by good friends at Lucas Oil. Go to lucasoil.com and find that one fine product to keep that one fine hot rod in your garage, in your storage, fat and happy. They got a line of products to keep the interior, exterior of your car happy. Go to lucasoil.com. That's lucasoil.com. Coming up in moments, Scott Dixon. He'll be joining us here in the Freak Nation. Your winner. From Long Beach, everyone in that broadcast was saying, there's no way Scott Dixon's going to win this damn thing with 10, 15 laps to go. Except Statman and me. It's Scott freaking Dixon. He could be in a crawler with half a push to pass, and you don't count the damn guy out. So stop it with this. I don't know, Scott. As long as he's got a thimble full of fuel, he's going to get there. And he's going to do the last five laps with that thimble. Yes. That's what Scott Dixon does. <laughs> but first, Crash Gladys, bit news and notes. Crasher, what you got? All right. You guys are talking about it. The 49th annual Long Beach Grand Prix was this weekend. That's where I'm hanging out. It was packed. Action on and off the track. First on Saturday, Dixon's teammates, Renger van der Zandy and Sebastian Bourdais, they won the strategy call for the race and won the IMSA race on the streets for Chip Ganassi. And uh, that team doubled up. Because they won again on Sunday with Scott Dixon, like you guys are talking about, in the IndyCar race. Yes, get this. The same Scott Dixon who finished last in Long Beach just one year ago. Both big winners from Long Beach, Renger, Vanner Zandy, and Scott Dixon, will be joining us on this show. Scott, as soon as I'm done babbling, so stay tuned. Also at the beach, Stadium Super Trucks, Max Gordon, race one winner, and Miles Cheek race two winner. Great last name, right? In the overnight hours in China... While messy in the mid parts of the race, the metronome raced on. Yeah, metronome is the nickname that Christian Horner has now given Max Verstappen as he just continues to continuously tick off fast pace and wins. Yeah, go on. Nashville's Nissan Stadium had an awesome crowd on hand for Supercross this weekend, witnessing RJ Hampshire's domination in the 250s and Jet Lawrence's sixth win on the season in the 450s. Each of them now can claim sole possession of their respective championships too. Didn't happen coming into the weekend, but they got it now. Further south in Atlanta, excuse me, Moto America held a massive weekend at Road Atlanta, which you saw, like all of the Moto America events on MAV TV. Cambobier with the spectacular last lap win in race one, but Cam was passed on the last lap in race two with Jake Gagne going on to the win. Amazing finishes. Let's stick with amazing finishes and go to Talladega just down the road in Alabama. Saturday, a doubleheader with ARCA and Xfinity. Jake Finch surprisingly going flag to flag to take the ARCA win on general tires. The Xfinity race, though, had the drama, including race leader Austin Hill getting spun with less than a handful of laps to go. Then his teammate, Jesse Love, sprinting forward on the second of three green-white checkers, holding on, though, to the finish for his first-ever big boy win. Jesse is also going to be joining us in hour two of this very show. Again, stay tuned. There were quite a few pileups in the cup race on Sunday. Nothing like the one delivered, though, on the last lap when Michael McDowell roller coastered his way down the banking in an attempt to preserve his lead and eventual win, but instead he spun much of the resulting field was collected as well, including Josh Berry with some wings and uh, Corey LaJoy. I don't know if you guys noticed this, going sideways on the wall on the fence. Insane. Tyler Reddick was your deserving winner. The first time team owner Michael Jordan was there in person to witness his team's win. Awesome. Crash Gladys Pit News and Notes brought to you by good friends at Lucas Oil. Do yourself a favor, Freak Nation. Go to lucasoil.com to find a line of products to keep your two-wheel, your four-wheel, your boat fat and happy. 
Crasher had a chance to catch up with Scott Dixon. But before I get into that, I, I need to welcome a new affiliate. I neglected it last week. I believe they joined us last week. My apologies. 93.5-1075 FM, The Fan, KNSG in Marshall, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Baby, congratulations for being a part of the Freak Nation. So I got in Minneapolis. I got to let him know. There you go. So, man, KNSG, congratulations for joining the Freaks. Good to have you in here, bud. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. uh, Freak Nation, Scott Dixon, Crash, you had a chance to catch up with him post-race. And, again, the guy's been coming in here for so long. My goodness. Just don't count him out, please. It's been the full 24 years that we've been in existence. Yeah, he's yeah. the Iceman cometh. He is amazing in fuel saving. And here he is, joining Crash right now. Speed Freak Spitz, Lucas Hall Studios, and right here on Mav TV. Scott Dixon, now a two-time Grand Prix of Long Beach winner. And, Scott, you say that numbers don't really bother you or affect you you don't really pay attention to numbers you're now 20 seasons running with a win you are in that 10 race window of wins with aj foyt how can that not affect you uh yeah i guess i don't really think about it too much you know obviously uh people like yourself bring it up which you know that's that's all fine and, and good as well but you know 10 still sounds like a very big number i think and especially with the competition that we have in indycar right now but uh you know it's it's uh it's a nice round number you know it's getting smaller which we're heading in the right direction um but yeah we'll, we'll just we'll keep focusing you know we'll focus on next weekend at barbara and then obviously the the indie runs that we've got coming up here but um yeah, as I always say, I hope that, you know, when you're done with your career, you can walk away and be happy with the stats you got. It's incredible to me, though. You've got one Indy 500. And your fan base out there wants more. Is that a number, though, that may kind of itches at you? I want more, for sure. More uh, 500 wins. You know, it's it's been a tough one there, you know. Uh, but it, that place owes me nothing. You know, uh, I'm very lucky to you know, have one win there. A lot of, uh, you know, very good drivers in the past and didn't, didn't get that opportunity. And, uh, you know, I still remember it uh, to this day that, that you know, that uh, how much it felt and how how good it did feel. Um, but yeah, you know, a second, uh, it, it's kind of weird. When you get your first win there, it, it just the drive to get another is, is huge. So finishing second there five times, I think, and maybe three or four of those under caution is never much fun, but, uh, you know, that's what they dish out. Is Long Beach... A venue that also kind of has that drive because two wins here is amazing but those have been tough to get yeah i think um you know you can definitely see one or two that got away you know i think uh the one year with with pagino uh which you know no no uh, he drove a fantastic race but we kind of misjudged that and then obviously they bought in now where you can't cross the pit the across the pit exit line um you know so that those things have changed but you know you, you always remember the ones that kind of got away for sure and and long beach is it's a tough race you know there's sometimes you think in strategy that you're going to be right in it even today you know with 15 laps to go i'm like uh, you know this seems pretty easy so far and then you could see them coming and i'm like uh, okay this is changing really quickly and you know it might be taken away from you so it um especially now with with just indycar racing it's it's so tough so uh it's nice really nice to get a second one here how were you doing that? You were on push to pass just oh so lightly. You're feathering the throttle. You're really being ginger on the on the button. How do you do all that? All the drivers that have come in here have said nobody knows how Scott Dixon managed this race. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's always about compromise, you know. And and uh, like a marriage. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And um, you know, it is hard. I think I hadn't. I don't think I've had a race where they were coming so quick and fast. You know that uh, you've normally kind of plateaued at this point of the race, and the strategy is kind of clear cut. These ones were merging quite quickly and quite early, which I was kind of shocked a little bit about. Uh, but Chip came on and was like, "Just go for it, man!" And I'm like, "Well, you know, we go for it and we don't finish. You know that that kind of sucks even more. You know." And he always says, "You know, if you can't finish first, finish second. And I'm like, "You know, we 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 really need the points." So it's. Um, you know, it worked out. Obviously, uh, the fuel error was on the on the safe side, which was fantastic. And and like I commented, you know, knowing that we had plenty of fuel, uh, you know, with two or three laps to go, you know, we still drove the in lap, still did a little bit of a burnout, and came in, you know, finished uh, in victory lane. So you know, we had we had fuel, man. It was good. It's just great. Arguably, maybe a double up for Chip Ganassi racing this weekend. Congratulations. But you know what? You stink. You yeah, need to go change. I do. Thank you. I need a shower. Thank you so much. <laughs> He did. That champagne was crazy. Tell it's Scott Dixon. <laughs> I mean, I guess champagne smells better than spilled milk, but the drivers would prefer milk on their fire suit over champagne. Listen, it's like I mean, telling he's the goat. He, yes, he he's is. He's the goat of IndyCar. And that's like telling Michael Jordan, Michael, you know what you stink. 
<laughs> I guess I didn't realize. Okay, fine. Well, whatever. Come on, you stink, bud. That'd be great. That'd be an awesome tweet. Or again, Richie, uh, that sounds gnarly to say tweet when it's actually called X, but we're still going to call it tweet, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, because we're not losers. What's the most pot? Who's the first person in your your household you took a big shower? <laughs> <laughs> This is world class cool. I'm enjoying this more than anything. Right. <laughs> Here's the deal, though, that it kind of came out. 20 seconds. Oh, okay. In qualifying, Scott Dixon, Scott Dixon did not make the fast six. He had an extra set of green sidewalled tires that weren't as worn in. That was probably his key to winning today. Just FYI. Listen. The dude could be on Fred Flintstone tires <laughs> and win the freaking race. Come he's on. The goat. He's the GOAT. Uh, Freak Nation, Michael McDowell, your pole sitter for NASCAR in the Talladega race, who we all thought was going to win that damn thing, led the most laps. He'll be joining us this hour. Also, uh, there's some noise coming out of IndyCar to the surprise and joy to a lot of IndyCar fans, and it has to do with a Formula One owner. We'll explain. Coming up, Speed Freaks Pits and the Lucas Hall Studios. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April, four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire, over 20 years with the freaks. And of course, General Tire delivers. For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has been solving some of the most difficult mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial industries. From our original Core 4 products, heavy-duty oil stabilizer, power steering, stop leak, transmission fix, and fuel treatment, we have now developed over 400 custom products to help solve some of the world's toughest mechanical issues. Go to lucasoil.com to see what we have in store for you. Lucas Oil. It works. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAV TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing, only on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Cashback is not available on gas in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Susan, I'm sorry I'm late. Traffic is terrible. It sure is. But on top of that, gas prices have been skyrocketing. I can't believe how expensive gas has gotten recently. Prices at the pump are up, but I never pay full price for gas anymore. I just use the free Upside app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the Upside app? Yes, I get real cash back every time I buy gas. And does that actually add up to anything? I've made around $200. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free Upside app now. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code BUY for an extra 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first fill-up. You can cash out any time right to your bank account, to PayPal, or any gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code BUY for a 25 cents per gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code BUY for 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first First, Philip. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. 800 215 6818. 800 215 6818. 
That's 800-215-6818. David was in big trouble with the IRS. At first, I didn't owe that much, but after this year, it was out of control. Then David called Get a Tax Lawyer. Right away, they were like, oh yeah, looks like you're qualified to save s- Get a Tax Lawyer went to work. <laughs> Should have called way sooner. Get a Tax Lawyer has helped thousands like David fight the IRS and get a fresh start. Call 800-745-3070. That's 800-745-3070. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. <laughs> Talking a lot about IndyCar today. Sunday's Long Beach Grand Prix warrants that conversation. That's the longest running and most important street race in America. But IndyCar is fighting, even struggling, to stay in business and grow. Lots of ideas are flying around, but I'm surprised that one isn't getting out of the talks. Spending caps, cost containment, more important than charters. If owners don't have a chance to make money, why write the check? We marvel at Formula One's financial strength, but that strength came after spending caps were put in place. Investor money will enter the sport if investors know the major teams with all the sponsors won't be able to spend them into the poorhouse. Even the proposed charters will be worth more when owners believe the charters have value. The teams will be able to upgrade equipment. B2B talks will make more sense. All this comes when costs are under series-wide control. So what am I missing here? Peace. Statman Scat brought to you by General Tire. Go to GeneralTire.com now through the end of April. you got about how many days are in April, Richie? Does residents of Millennial know how many days are in April? I know there's, isn't there like a mnemonic thing and you do the the deal with the thing? And I I have no idea. I'm just going to guess 30. Okay. Is that right? Nice job, bro. Nice job. Yep. You have nine days until the end of April to yeah. get yourself four qualifying passenger tires from General Tire and get up to 70 bucks back with a Visa prepaid card. That's right. Go to GeneralTire.com to find out how you can get up to 70 bucks back with a Visa prepaid card by buying four qualifying tires from General Tire. Playing on And stand- the knuckle trick. Hold on, though. The knuckle trick. If, you, if the month falls in a valley and you start here on your first knuckle, oh January is on the knuckle. February is in a valley. That's how you know that the, the month has lower days. So you go January, February, March, April. Oop, April's in a valley. It has 30 days, not 31. Or 30 days have September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31. You know how, how I do it? I just turn around and look at my GDM calendar. Why do we have to have all these bloody freaking nursery rhymes? Remember how many damn days are in the month? Hey, I I use that all the time, especially at this time of the month when I have to figure out when do I have to pay my bills. (laughs) Hey, I misspoke, maybe, as far as we know. Zach Brown is the CEO of McLaren Racing. Mm -hmm. Formula One, IndyCar, and I'm sure there's some side bets going on as well. But Zach Brown, we knew Zach Brown initially when he started Just Marketing, which was a marketing group out of Indianapolis, specifically for motorsports, NASCAR, IndyCar, and other forms of motorsports, sports car racing. I believe the first deal he did with NASCAR, if you look at Wikipedia, had everything to do with the first spirit with NASCAR. I believe it was Crown Royal, where he brought Crown Royal into NASCAR. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. (laughs) Zach Brown has since moved on and become a player in Formula One and the IndyCar series, so much so that an IndyCar executive threw it out there without Zach Brown knowing that uh, he was being considered or, frankly, being begged to come help us with our marketing, Zach Brown. Zach Brown acquiesced and said, sure, Crasher, right? I just find this interesting that Mark Miles threw out the idea of this. I get all these things confused. NASCAR is the race team alliance. IndyCar is the, it, this marketing group. This, this, come on. What's the name of it? Somebody help me out here. Just, just go with it, man. Nobody's going to check force. you. 
task force, okay. marketing task force. <laughs> so yeah, Mark Miles, the executive of IndyCar, <laughs> throws it out there a couple months ago saying we've got this tax task force coming together. Yet none of the owners were really aware of that yet. It was supposed to be a group of owners to give critical input to make the series better. And so that first happened. And then fast forward a couple of months, he says, oh, yeah, Zach Brown's going to be a part of this task force. Meanwhile, Zach's like, that's the first I've heard of it. But OK, I'll go along. And the good news is Zach Brown does have a very heavy marketing pedigree and he gets it. He gets these sorts of things. I like everything that he wants to bring to the table. Will it all come together? I'm not sure. But to rewind real quick to what we just heard with Statman's scat, it's true. Zach has not brought up a cost control measure whatsoever. And with, and with him being involved in both Formula One and IndyCar, you would think that that would be top of mind. I know he wants to limit the car count in order to create a greater demand for getting in that car count. I don't understand how there would be a greater demand if you limit it and don't allow anybody else to buy in as far as a charter or however else you allow other people to come in. That part's weird to me. Getting well, this in a cost it, containment though would work. I, I like your cost idea. Crash, that, that's the whole basis of the charter. If there's 10 guys that want, or 10 people that want to be involved in the sport and there's only eight charters, then there's a each there's a lot of bid for just like when there were forty three people that wanted to get into a thirty three car field at the Indy five hundred. There's a lot of competition to get in there, and that makes the charters more valuable. But in this uh, case, they have to be willing to sell, right? And if they're not, if those eight, let's just use that that number that you threw out. If those eight aren't willing to sell, then how does anybody else get in? Well, that, you don't you don't make any money on your house until you sell it but the house continues to go up in value. And if they want to borrow against it, if they want to be more, whatever they want to do, it's going up in value. If more people are willing to jump in, if they decide to sell. So uh, that's the, that's the whole theory behind the charters is that the teams want something that they have where they could build some equity in what they're doing. Okay, let me jump in here. Some of the things, some of the items that Zach Brown would like to see changed or improved. And I read this story and I tried to poke holes in damn near everything Zach Brown was saying. <laughs> it's tough for me to agree with damn near everything that comes out of anybody associated in motorsports. But frankly, everything he was saying was so spot on about limiting the car count in IndyCar, which is similar to what Statman and Crasher was just talking about. Improving the broadcast uh, with pr predictive scenarios. He said, I'd like to have next level information, which is soft tires. So they're going to be a half a second lap faster for eight laps. If Paulo doesn't catch Joseph by lap eight, his tires are going to fall off and the strategy wouldn't work. In other words, telling us what we're seeing, telling us something other than what we're seeing and why we're seeing it. Yeah, uh, Kenny, Kenny um, let me jump in here because that, that was a big problem for me today in listening to the race where they have primary tires, they have primes, they have uh, red, they reds, they have greens, they have blacks. Uh, I don't know what any of this stuff means and I follow it. So I can't imagine what the person who's on the, uh, the marginal fan who just tunes in to see a race every now and then, they don't know what's going on. And they, everybody assumes that there's up to speed as the pit reporters are. They need to make that clear. And that I would have thought that with that article this week that they would have tried to do that, but they didn't. Another thing that I've talked with many IndyCar team PR people over the last couple of years is with NTT Data as your primary sponsor, why are they not providing some of this massive data that these social accounts and the TV broadcast can throw out there and make you want to tune in like, oh, so-and-so's tires are going away at this many seconds per lap, whereas so-and-so, New Garden is chasing them. Give it five more laps. Watch him pass. You will be glued to the TV and saying, oh, my God, they were right. Five laps. It's the data. You are NTT data. Give us some of that data for fun and force us to keep watching. It, that's how it works. Make it entertaining. The other item that, that, that Zach Brown brought up again, he is the CEO of McLaren Racing and evidently has been recruited to help market IndyCar. 
uh, you talk about a big mea culpa. He says, improving the look of IndyCar by how it's displayed. We've been saying this for 24 years. I think the drivers are the stars. We need to put them on the pedestal. We could give you two handfuls of drivers who've confided in us that the marketing of the series and the drivers specifically was abysmal. Zach Brown sees that. And changes to the race schedule. I think the doubleheader thing, sponsors don't view it as two-race weekend or as two races. It's one weekend. So getting rid of the doubleheaders that they've had in the past. Also, Zach Brown says they really need to get on the East Coast more often with the series. Yeah, it's we'll just see if it's implemented. The tracks that have gone away. Pocono, New Hampshire, Richmond. Come on, guys. Yeah, get back on the East Coast. Not just Florida, right. the actual coastal. Watkins Glen, just get there. All right, Freak Nation. Coming up next, uh, NASCAR in a similar situation with their charter class where they say one thing, but the drivers are saying another. NASCAR says, yeah, all good. Drivers are saying, hold on there, Skip Jack. Let's put the brakes on it just a bit. We'll explain. Also, Michael McDowell, your pole sitter for Talladega's race. He'll be joining us here in the Freak Nation. And we'll also hear from Jesse Love, Xfinity Series winner, got his first win at Talladega. Yep, it's a big uh, second hour coming up, but first... I need to pay some bills there, Freak Nation. Can we do that just yet? Yep. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Keeping your pride and joy perfect is as easy as one, two, three. Start with Slick Mist Speed Wax. Simply mist on and wipe off for professional detailer shine. For your tires and trim, there's Lucas Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Spray on and wipe off for better than new look. Then finish her with Lucas Slick Mist Interior Detailer. Just spray and wipe. Easy. Use Lucas Slick Mist Car Care products and she'll never look better. Fast, easy, and professional. Really, it's sort of like having an extra set of hands. Or three. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire over 20 years with the freaks and of course, General Tire delivers. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAP TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAP TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing, only on MAP TV, Motorsports Network. As your power steering pump ages, seal leaks may occur, causing the power steering system to lose fluid. Your power steering system may also develop an annoying squeal, and the steering may become more difficult to handle. By using Lucas Power Steering Stop Leak, you will stop the seal leaks, reduce slack in rack and pinion, eliminate the squeals and hard spots in your power steering system. It is guaranteed to stop seal leaks or your money back. Lucas Power Steering Stop Leak. It works. Freak Nation, head to your local General Tire dealership now to check out the latest additions to their product lineup. The Grabber family of tires are engineered for durability and feature innovative performance features that offer all-terrain capability, blending exceptional off-road durability and impressive on-road performance, all while sporting aggressive styling. For outstanding off-road performance coupled with strong street manners, look no further than General Tire. General Tire delivers for whatever you do, and the official tire of Speed Freaks since 2001. David was in big trouble with the IRS. At first, I didn't owe that much, but after this year, it was out of control. Then David called Get a Tax Lawyer. Right away, they were like, oh yeah, looks like you're qualified to say it's 
Get a tax lawyer went to work. <laughs> Should have called way sooner. Get a tax lawyer has helped thousands like David fight the IRS and get a fresh start. Call 800 745 3070. That's 800 745 3070. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All American Dish, your dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. Freak Nation, coming up, Michael McDowell sat on the pole to kick off Talladega on Sunday and, frankly, should have won the damn thing. He did something that um, a lot of folks don't know how to do at about 200 miles an hour, turn left and right. And he did what most of us would do, turning left and right at 200 miles an hour. It would wipe our ass out, man. (laughs) Dang it, Ford didn't get their win. Hey, we were talking about Zach Brown, CEO of McLaren. Formula One IndyCar. And Steve O'Donnell with NASCAR recently put out a statement. I think it was this week, Richie, where he put out a statement about, hey, man, we're uh, we're real close. And I paraphrase here, Richie, because you're going to help set this thing up. Yeah, Steve we're, O'Donnell, we're, he's, right? the, he's the NASCAR COO. He yeah. was at a conference this week in L.A., and he was specifically asked about how close NASCAR and its teams are to a brand-new charter agreement, which actually expired At the beginning of this season, he said, quote, we're very close. Here's the problem, though. Um, Sources with the Sports Business Journal went on to explain that uh, three people familiar with the team's thinking also that they disagree with O'Donnell's assessment of a deal being very close. That was backed up by one Denny Hamlin, who was asked about it on Saturday. And he said, the four key elements that I haven't seen NASCAR brought up and what our ask has been, they have not been addressed. Those have not been conceded to us. I think it's just positive messaging more than it's actually real. Steve O'Donnell's stepping in it, man, out here pretty much lying in public. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wasn't Brad Keselowski, another owner that kind of backed up what Denny Hamlin was saying, also agreeing that, yeah, wait, no, we haven't heard any of this positivity. Yes. Statman, you care to share what you were sharing with us on that text thread during the break? Well, most things get out from talks, closed door talks, because somebody wants it out. And this way, NASCAR, uh, Steve O'Donnell, gets the word out, makes NASCAR look good, makes people uh, depend on NASCAR. They control the message. People come to them. What do you have to say? And the teams look like they are... uh, just grousing and complaining because they're not getting their way. The teams need to get out their message. And if there's a problem, they get out there and say it and uh, not just have a guy here and a guy there have an official spokesman, whoever their equivalent of O'Donnell is, get out there and and, uh, say what's going on. So the message is coherent and, um, uh, um, fits every everybody is signed on to what's being said. Crash of the similarities between ownership in NASCAR and, and the ownership in the IndyCar series, uh, frankly, have become more similar <laughs> over the last several years. Where you'll again, Michael Andretti, where he was basically laughing at where uh, Penske Motorsports Entertainment, whatever the name of the company is that owns Penske IMS Entertainment. and IndyCar series, yeah, Penske, Penske Entertainment. Entertainment. And Zach Brown, frankly, saying the same damn thing in that long article regarding what he would do differently for the IndyCar series. And now with Denny Hamlin, look, you've got the greatest freaking basketball player of all time in your freaking pits. You can roll out with your chest puffed out and say damn near anything if you're a freaking backmarker. If Michael Jordan's there to back my butt up, 
I'm going to go out there and say it. But Denny Hamlin's got a decent resume. Doesn't have a championship, but dude can win some freaking races. He's a popular, both unpopular and popular driver. But frankly, he's saying a lot of things that other team owners and drivers are not saying. And I told you this a few weeks ago. I sat in the pits of a motorsports series talking to a NASCAR team, multi-team owner in the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series, saying he hasn't, other than Mike Helton back in the day, he has not heard one thing from NASCAR. Not one thing. Do the math. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it doesn't take too much to figure that out. Hadn't heard a damn thing from him. But you've got Denny Hamlin out there saying what a lot of team owners and drivers are frankly saying. Crash? I'm just confused because I like this this management group, this executive group of NASCAR in that they've brought so many new eyeballs to the sport. Some of the old time fans can't stand what's been going on with the series. I like it. They're thinking outside the box when it comes to different circuits, the Chicago street race last, last year. Oh my gosh. So there's a lot of things that I like out of this executive group, but it's true. We keep hearing either through the grapevine or straight from the horse's mouth that the executive group is not communicating as they should be with the team. So I'm really conflicted here. I want to like this group running NASCAR, but I don't want the teams to get pushed aside like they are claiming to be. Look, Statman, Crasher, Richard C. Suave's relative newness to motorsports. It's, it's the civil war back in the day with NASCAR to where we are now. It's such a change. I don't know what kind of metaphor or comparison I was trying to use there other than it was backwoods when we started this. And I got to be careful. No, it wasn't necessarily backwoods. Let's just say leaps and bounds from when we started this thing. It's, it's and, leaps and bounds better than when we started in the year 2000. Yes. Right. And, but again, you hear players in the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball grousing about issues that they've got with team ownership and the heads of Major League Baseball and the National Football League. Of course, you're going to get it. You're talking charters now. And if the, the basic way to understand charters in IndyCar and NASCAR, it's like Major League Baseball teams. There are team owners. There's NFL team owners. There are NASCAR team owners, and they want to put value in these teams to where if they buy them for a quarter of a million dollars, excuse me, a quarter of a billion dollars, that maybe 10 years from now they could sell them for a billion dollars. Hello, Clippers. <laughs> That's my point is, yeah, there's a lot of scoots involved, and Statman set up for 24 years. Follow the freaking money specifically when it comes to the bitching and moaning that's coming with this. So if Denny Hamlin is saying there are four things specifically that we have not, we as owners have not heard from NASCAR on, we have not been given any answers to these four things that we want. I threw it out on our text thread. What are these four things? And Statman, you were an saying on money. That. Oh, I have an update on that crash. Okay. I have an update. He, Denny Hamlin did not specify it publicly when he was asked about it this weekend at Talladega. He said, I would have to let the team negotiating committee answer that, but it's been the same four for a year and a half. Oh. They can tell you exactly what those are. Interesting that he didn't make it public, huh? And Statman, you say, again, it's cost containment. It's money. Money related. Yes. Give me a bigger cut of the TV deal. Yeah, they want they, they want more money. And they want a way to uh, cut costs so that they have a chance to turn a profit. Uh, they don't have that. Uh, they don't have that chance now. And if they want people involved in the sport with their money, they got a chance to, to get an ROI uh, somehow. As I've changed in many different facets of my life, I, I go back to my opinion back in the day of being corporate friendly and I mean, back in the day, and the employees secondary. But I've changed my attitude a little bit over the last several decades when it came to that. And I, I'm liking what I'm hearing from the from the drivers and the team owners. I'm just curious, does it really even resonate with the fans, though? Does it resonate? Do they give a damn how much? If, if it, I don't think like so. Like we've said before, the fact that – got a break here in about 30 seconds. The fact that, you know what – 
I've got a 42 foot yacht. Do I really need a 45 foot yacht? Nah, does it really resonate? I don't know. Don't know. I mean, we could throw it, it out re- on social, but I don't think it does. Yeah. Right. But we're talking Nation. about it. Yeah. Uh, Michael McDowell, your pole sitter, who we thought was going to win that damn thing to that last lap, that last turn, turn four, Talladega. He joins us in the Freak Nation. Jesse Love, who got his first win with the Xfinity Series at Talladega on Saturday. Big second hour coming up here, the Freak Nation. Be sure you stick around for this big old thing. More freaks coming up. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. You take car maintenance seriously, and you want to pass on that legacy of care. Use Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer to shield your engine from excessive heat, debris, and friction. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. Now that's a good-looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire, over 20 years with the freaks, and of course, General Tire delivers. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAV TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing, only on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Life can be full of risks. One thing you shouldn't take a risk with ever is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or you now need affordable health insurance, you need to make this free call right now and see how the health insurance helpline can help you get it. We specialize in helping the self-employed and people just like you that need affordable health insurance to get it. We have short and long-term health insurance plans and some even cover dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Don't take a risk with your family's health insurance it's not worth it if you're self-employed or now need affordable health insurance call right now and learn for free how to get it listen affordable health insurance plans for everyone just like you are a free phone call away so give us a shout right now 800-659-7540 800-659-7540 800-659-7540 that's 800-659-7540 At Lucas Oil, we take pride in creating problem-solving products to make your car care easier. We protect your vehicle and make it run longer so you can focus on the things that matter most. Lucas Oil. It works. Cashback is not available on gas in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Susan, I'm sorry I'm late. Traffic is terrible. It sure is. But on top of that, gas prices have been skyrocketing. I can't believe how expensive gas has gotten recently. Prices at the pump are up, but I never pay full price for gas anymore. I just use the free Upside app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the Upside app? Yes, I get real cash back every time I buy gas. And does that actually add up to anything? I've made around $200. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free Upside app now. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code BUY for an extra 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first fill-up. You can cash out anytime right to your bank account, to PayPal, or any gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code BUY for a 25 cents per gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code BUY for 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first First, Philip, you are listening to Speed Freaks Motorsports Radio Redefined.
Radio redefined with Kenny Sargent. We love the party. Crash Gladys. What are we doing for the bachelorette party? And Statman. I am serious. Here's the freaks. Freak Nation, coming up in moments, Michael McDowell sitting on the pole for your Talladega race on Sunday. Coming around on that last lap, turn four, thought he had himself a win, but nope, didn't do it. The Michael McDowell will be joining us here in the Freak Nation. Also more from Tyler Reddick, your winner from Talladega. Jesse Love Jr. will be here. Xfinity Series winner, Crasher, was crying over the weekend because he won the damn race. You okay, Crasher? <laughs> you all right? Way to air out the dirty laundry there, dude. Tell yes, I got teary eyed. I was very excited for him when he crossed the finish line. I good for him. Yeah, yes. I was very excited. Good for, good for Jesse. Jesse Love. Also, Vander's ring and banger and hanger will be here this hour. Ranger Vander Zandy. Love that name. My That's goodness. A damn good name. A pair of pants, isn't it? I got me some Vander Zandies. Yeah. Right? Got yeah. a pair of Vander Zandies. <laughs> but would you ever, I mean, please don't. Take a Gronel mm -hmm. in your Vander Zandies. Nope, I would not do it. Vander Zandy won himself a race at Long Beach at the IMSA Series on Saturday. He'll be here this hour. Be sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're there for you, man. And, of course, the website, speedfreaks.tv. Richie, take off those graphics. Wanted to remind you. Uh, uh, there it goes for our Matt TV is, watchers. There you go. Uh, Michael McDowell. Love this guy. The stories we could tell you about him. And they're all good. Hell of a man, hell of a family man, hell of a husband, and a hell of a super speedway racer. Grabbed himself the pole for Talladega, thought he had himself a win. Who cares? Had a chance to catch up with him at Talladega. It's a good six minutes with uh, Michael McDowell right now here in Freak Nation. Lucas Oil Studios, Speed Freaks Pits, Freak Radio Network, and on MAV TV. So, Michael McDowell, watching your press conference when you're sitting in front of all the press group. There are questions that, that are asked that I think, oh, why didn't they know that answer? But frankly, there are answers that you're giving that I didn't expect the answer. And it comes to the driving style now with Talladega is different than it was it where is, yeah. you were talking about you don't want to lose a position in Talladega. Yeah. When in the past, I thought it really doesn't matter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in the old days, you kind of knew when business would pick up and when you needed to be in position. And if you didn't want to risk it early in the race, you could kind of drop to the back a little bit and stay in that lead draft, but not be in the mess, you know? Um, but you could build so much more momentum later on and you could get through the field if you had a good handling car and you had a lot of speed. And, you know, this next gen car just drafts differently. And I, I also think too, that the drivers and the teams execute at such a high level now that, you know, with working the strategy and working the manufacturers staying together and working together and trying to throw off the next manufacturer. And they're trying, you know, there's so much going on um, that you have to stay in position and you have to race really hard to do that. Now, that doesn't mean if you're running 15th that, you you know, you got to be bonsai three wide middle. Sure. But you definitely don't want to go back to 30th because you feel like something could happen. Those days are kind of gone where you can drop to the back if you feel like you're in a bad spot and then cycle back to the front. Now you may miss the accident 
and there might be one. And if 10 cars fall out of it, it might work out, but you're not going to get back to the lead. You're not going to get back to win the race. And I think that that's where the mentality's changed is you're not just trying to score points and come out of here with a top 10. You're trying to win the race. And if you're going to win the race, you have to be up front all day. Is that more so the design of the car versus the newer driver approach? I think it's all of the above. Oh. I, I think that some of it has to do with the car with like the side draft and, you know, the, the top line just doesn't build as much momentum as it used to. You know, it used to be if you get five or six guys that would take that three wide top, as long as you had a couple really strong cars up there, you could get past a lot of rows. Now you don't really have that. You do have three wide, but you can't just take the momentum and, and pass a bunch of cars like you used to be able to. So the way that the cars draft is different, but also how the guys and how hard everybody runs throughout the entire race has changed. Is it fun, and I ask this in all honesty, fun to be a teammate of Gilliland, given the fact that he's still kind of green, may ask you some questions, but the dude is kicking ass? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for me, I'm super proud of Todd. Mm. And I mean, I don't know how to say other than this. I take a lot of pride in that he's doing well. I feel like I've embraced him as my teammate as much as I've ever had anybody, and I have have spent so much time in trying to make sure – that he can be successful mm -hmm. and he puts the time and the effort in to be successful so when he runs well i'm super pumped and uh, i'm happy for him because i feel like i'm a part of that and i feel like he's worked really hard to do that and i want to see him succeed and so it's it's not one of those teammate situations <laughs> where i'm like oh this guy he's he's fast i better step it up or i'm gonna lose my job it's more of like man i am so pumped for todd to be running well and help elevate our program and having two cars running up front often is important and so yeah it's it's fun to watch him do well does it help his dad and you had some time on the track together you guys knew each other yeah definitely i think that's a big part of it because i've known um you know toddy since he was a kid and obviously race with his dad and have a lot of respect for his dad and his dad and i are friends as well and so um i kind of felt that responsibility <laughs> when todd was my teammate to make sure that you know, I did right by him and his dad and, you know, cup racing's tough. You're just thrown into the fire, you know, and, and even though Todd had decent experience, it's never enough when you mm -hmm. get to the cup level. And so just trying to do everything I can to help him be prepared and understand how to prepare. And if I can expedite that learning curve at all, then I want to do that for him. Does it feel like it's still you guys against the world with sure. Front Row Motorsports? A hundred percent. And that's the mentality that we take and we like it. It keeps us hungry. And, you know, as we've seen results, you know, and as we've seen, Hey, this is possible, you know, it's not just, <laughs> not just a fantasy, right? Like we can mm -hmm. do this and yeah, maybe we don't do it week in and week out where we have this type of speed, but um, we're better everywhere and we're faster everywhere than we used to be. And, um, and so I, we take a lot of pride in, in running well and trying to beat the big teams and, um, when we can do that, it's fun. And, you know, we, we work hard and we pride ourselves on being efficient and getting the most out of everything we can. Where is that gap between, let's say, RCR, who we know runs well on these bigger tracks versus where you guys are? You guys are hitting something there. But then again, Hendrick, what, what is it with the lack of money that you guys that can find that these well-funded teams seem to just take it for granted it's just all about people really you just have good people that are hungry and i know they have good people that are hungry but it's probably a little easier for us to move on things because we probably don't have as much processes and red tape mm -hmm. so we find something we just put it in our car and do it that week we don't have to ask anybody we don't have to go through a <laughs> you know competition director technical director you know xyz you know, just keep going down well we got to make sure the engineers you know run cfd we don't have to worry about any of that stuff because we don't have any of it we just go and do it if we think it's better so i think that helps us respond a little bit quicker mm -hmm. than maybe some um but we just have really talented people at front row that are are working their guts out mm -hmm. then we've hit on a few things right and once you start to build that momentum and you start to see that all right there's things that we're doing that are moving the needle then you keep growing and keep building Texas, they took down the timing tower. They take down the timing yeah, tower here. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> notice. Yeah, everyone's talking about it. I didn't notice. I must not pay attention to those things. Um, <laughs> you know, the only thing is somebody mentioned to it on the grid there. And when you're standing on pit road, you used to look, right, mm -hmm. just to see kind of where where you are and, and, um, and who's in that top 10. And so 
yeah, it's, it's going to take some getting used to, but yeah, I, it's, um, it's a topic of conversation. Brother, it's fantastic. We, we're proud of you. Thank you. We love the underdog story. You know, it's just what we've been doing for so many years yeah. ourselves, man. That's cool. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Love that guy, Michael McDowell. I think it's tongue in cheek with these, not Tommy Tower Crasher. I couldn't think of it. What I'm trying to say? A scoring pylon. Scoring pylon. I think it's tongue in cheek. I do. We're, in fact, Crasher, we were talking to an executive. Okay, not executive, but someone higher up with Texas Motor Speedway. They took down their tower, and they thought, "Yep, yeah, Texas Motor Speedway, you're closing. That's it. Done." <laughs> <laughs> Texas is a different situation. Talladega's tower allegedly is going back up. They're just making it better. Their scoring pylon I'm talking about. Texas is not going to put their pylon back up because their big hoss, their huge TV screen, basically taking up half the backstretch, is good enough. <laughs> you don't need a scoring pylon and big hoss. now. And Bristol, the same thing. Their tower went down, and now they've got the big kind of like a basketball mm -hmm. scoring thing in the middle. That's what Bristol has. So to each their own, not every track needs a scoring pylon. And I'm, I'm a motorsports purist. I love the pylon. Don't you dare take it away from Indianapolis. That one has to stay. Well, but that pylon though is you've got what one through 25 drivers on that one. At least you can know you have all the way to 33. All right. Versus Texas and Talladega, where it's like one through 10. You have that stupid rotation thing. They've got it at Phoenix Raceway where you got to do all that rotation. Wait for your damn driver. He's not the top 10 or 15, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> Listen to us, man. We're sounding like those drivers that Statman talks about trying to find things to gripe about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with my pylon. No. Do you think the pylon is necessary if fewer people are showing up at the track? Let's get in the damn way, man. Well, with video screens everywhere, no, they are kind of going by the wayside. It, it's it's uh, a traditional thing. It's a it's a history thing. William Byron put it out there. He had to be joking. Don't mess with tradition. Stop it. <laughs> Tyler oh, Reddick, a big win in Talladega. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> Tyler Reddick will be joining us next segment. Also, Jesse Love and a pair of jeans that won the IMSA race. At uh, Long Beach. <laughs> More freaks coming up. Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio. Redefined. One of the main reasons for poor vehicle performance is a dirty fuel system. It can cause decreased fuel economy and actually do harm to your engine over time. By adding Lucas Fuel Treatment to your vehicle, it cleans and lubricates the entire fuel system. Pump, carburetors, fuel injectors, and valves as you drive. It also improves your vehicle's performance. It's a non-solvent product designed to protect both gasoline and diesel engines. Lucas Fuel Treatment. It works. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April, four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire over 20 years with the freaks and of course, General Tire delivers the weekend racing is over or is it not on math tv monday is all american racing night on the network which never leaves the track sit back and enjoy grassroots red white and blue racing from america's most iconic tracks whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt math tv's monday night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four-wheel battlegrounds monday night is all american racing only on math tv motorsports network the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. Life can be full of risks, 
One thing you shouldn't take a risk with ever is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or you now need affordable health insurance, you need to make this free call right now and see how the health insurance helpline can help you get it. We specialize in helping the self-employed and people just like you that need affordable health insurance to get it. We have short and long-term health insurance plans, and some even cover dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Don't take a risk with your family's health insurance. It's not worth it. Worth it. If you're self-employed or now need affordable health insurance, call right now and learn for free how to get it. Listen, affordable health insurance plans for everyone just like you are a free phone call away. So give us a shout right now. 800-659-7540. 800-659-7540. 800-659-7540. That's 800-659-7540. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsport. Sports Radio redefined. Lucas Oil, lucasoil.com. Lucas Oil has been a part of the Freak Nation damn near 24 years as we celebrate our 24th year coming up in June. Go to lucasoil.com. You're getting that boat, getting it out of the cobwebs, getting it out of storage, about to put it on your lake, on that pond out behind your house. Go to lucasoil.com. Yes, they have marine products to keep your boats, your speed boats, your jet skis all fat and happy. Go to lucasoil.com. That's lucasoil.com. One of the things, and again, Stat, Crash, Richard C. Suave, that – Sometimes I'll look around and think, what the hell? Is this a NASCAR track? Is their friendliness to children? I was at Talladega, and there is a there's two parks. They have a kids' park <laughs> right there, just inside the track and inside Pit Road, uh, outside of Big Bill France's big party bar, whatever the hell they call it there. But there's a place for the kids to hang while mom and dad get over there and get sauced on some hard liquor. Kids can go hang on their little park, on their rides. And in the driver owner lot, there's a huge park for kids. All kinds of swing sets and rides this and ride that and slides. The accommodation that they're providing to families is obvious. And it, and it, it frankly, it's, it's refreshing. Uh, being the father of a 10-year-old and dragging her damn near every place. Granted, she's a little too old to be playing on these type of parks. It's just cool to see. And one thing that Tyler Reddick did that I brought up with, gosh, I forget what what driver it was that was celebrating with their children. Oh, it might. Oh, it's Kyle Larson. It was Larson. Right, right. Uh, Tyler Reddick, again, you saw Michael Jordan, but holding Tyler Reddick's son? You want to go hang with your old man? I mean, come on, please. Tyler Reddick talking about celebrating that Talladega win with his family. Certainly some of the most special, you know, victories and moments in victory lane have uh, had a lot to do with my kid, honestly. Uh, I remember I went back to Road America. He was just knocked out. And we laid him on uh, our Sparco, uh, like the, the smaller size Sparco, like carry-on bag. The hell of victory lane stuff on it and he was still younger at the time and he hadn't quite got the potty training thing figured out and i remember alexa laid him down on that bag and he just absolutely peed all over all the victory lane hats and everything else in, in his sleep just just uh just made it made a good old-fashioned mess but uh yeah and then fast forward a little bit later than that he was awake for indy and uh he watched us kiss the bricks and was like what is wrong with you guys so that was really cool too but uh yeah to have him wide awake in victory lane um, celebrating with us. He he knows who Michael Jordan is. Anytime uh, I have a pair of Jordans on or he does, I'm, I you know I always ask a question, whose shoes are these? And he says, Michael Jordan's shoes. So, um, yeah, I think in the moment it means a lot, right? But as he gets older and everything too, uh, looking back on that, that's going to be really, really cool. Hold on a second, though. Do you guys remember back in 2004, 2005, we had just met Colin McRae, and when we came back, we were we met Colin McRae at the Dakar Rally in Barcelona for the kickoff in that year. I think I believe it was 2004. 
Fast forward, we come back, we start talking to people about Colin McRae and some of the kids in the group that we were, kids, new teenagers that we were talking about. Oh, the guy in the video game? That would be their response. So does Tyler Reddick's son actually go, oh, you mean the guy that makes shoes and, and clothes, you know, like right. your hat, dad? Not the basketball player, but the, the, the clothing guy and your team owner. It's just so funny, the perspective of different generations on these massive names in sports. It was, again, I, every one of us have a, a story to tell about our fathers getting us involved in sports or motorsports. And I think the, the, the biggest event that we see, and you'll see it on MAV TV with Monster Jam, we, 40%, 50% of the crowd is it's kids, right? We stat, man, it, when we were at Detroit – at the old at Lion, whatever Ford, what, Ford Field or Inflatable Freddy, whatever the hell it was, it was a Silver Dome. Wasn't Silver Dome. It? Yeah, it was the Silver Dome. Yes, yeah, I mean that was our that was our first up close and personal uh, view of the crowd at Monster Jam, and it it was it was noticeable. It's like what makes sense once Hold you on. see it. Statman, do you remember what you heard a kid tell his parents? Oh, his- yeah, the, the, the kid was holding on to his dad's hand and he was jumping around and the dad was buying everything for him. <laughs> and the kid was walking by and said, Dad, I'm having so much fun. And that's what the, they're getting. The, that's mm-hmm. what everybody wants. That At PRI, that was the number one thing everybody was talking about. How do we get kids involved in this? So... When the one generation leaves, the next one comes along. And when you see guys like Denny Hamlin, who, when we started this, he was one of the young guns. Now he's an elder statesman, but you see Kyle Larson's kids and Tyler Reddick. And I could go on, Brad, because I could go on and on and on. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to carry on. We, Brexton Bush with Kyle Bush. Looks like it, that gene was passed down. But as far as other drivers and their children, I don't know if they'll carry the torch. Right? Like a, like John Force's – John Force has grandchildren that are working their way up through drag racing. Gary Selzy's sons in sprint cars with Geo and Dominic, yeah, Dominic Selzy. I think it all depends. I mean, yes, right now we're seeing amazing things out of Brexton Bush. He very well may go on to the big leagues, but Cash Boyer, who knows? It just depends on right now. A lot of kids are doing some racing, but are they going to want to stick with it? I mean, it is a lot of work. Even if you have parents encouraging you, will they stick with it? That's that's the big question down the road. Well, we just talked about Todd Gilliman, whose dad, Dave, was a Mm. NASCAR driver and uh, uh, Randy LaJoy's son, Corey, is out there running at the front of the line sometimes. So, yeah, these guys are coming along, but NASCAR is making an effort to bring families involved in crash. I'm putting you on the spot here and I'm sorry, but is IndyCar doing the same thing? I don't believe so. Not with the intentional effort that NASCAR is putting in. I I will go back to Phoenix in which they had some kid campaign. I'm sorry. I don't have the actual wording for what they had with a bunch of under 12 year olds around that infield. And I saw kids walking. They had an opportunity. This was kind of a one-off. I believe I saw kids walking the red carpet with drivers and teams to go into the driver's meeting. And I thought, Whoa, I had never seen that before. And then out, on pit lane before they clear the pits there were kids out there doing their thing taking pictures meeting people and i'm like yeah this is this is new i have not seen that at an indycar race yet at all so no the indycar needs to be more intentional with that for sure if you want to get younger kids involved you gotta have something there for them um to be to engage them in what's happening because these are kids that are on their phones and Every 90 seconds, their attention span goes somewhere else. Yep. So uh, they've got you got to do something to get them involved. 
Yeah. Make their attention span on their phone that event that you brought them to. Make them go back and t- and look through all those pictures of the cars that they just took at the racetrack. Yeah, that yeah. that holds a lot of weight. Stat man talking about kids and their attention span. I got my uh, my quota today or my screen time on my phone. <laughs> I'm averaging over nine hours on my freaking phone a day. Yeah, me beat, dude. That's insane. No, swap. Then there's got to be it. There's a, the fix is in, man. <laughs> there's no way, Richie. How can maybe because I'm awake more than you I'm, are? I'm gonna look. It, I'm gonna look it up right now. Here we go. This is great. No Star way. Radio. No, I average about like seven and a half hours. That's, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Look at that. Look, there we go. There's the. Oh, you can't see it but no. on the damn camera. But at, my daily average is six and a half hours. And Kenny, you're nine. There's something's fixed here. That can't be right. That just that's it. Well, here's I, the deal. I'm on you my do, phone more than I sleep. No, no, no. You do a lot of editing on your phone. Let's let's just be honest here. It's not like you're scrolling social media. You are I editing too, videos. Crash. No, that's yes, you do. Yes, you do. So that that's you do a lot of scrolling, Richie. So shut up. I do both. <laughs> and you still have me need by two hours. This is incredible. I'm actually fascinated by this because I thought my screen time was terrible. I was like, oh, man, I'm on my phone way too much. And no, no, I get beat. I, I get beat by Kenny Sargent. Is Elon Musk taking over Apple? She's screwing that up too. <laughs> Damn it. Nine hours. There's Kenny. no way I'm on nine hours and 26 minutes a day. Was that just when you were at Talladega or was that all last week? That's all last week, man. Time's up by seven. I spend more time on my phone than what I do with my daughter. Oh, stop it. <laughs> wow. We got a break. We got to get out of here. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you I do. do. You love. Coming up next, Speed Freaks Pits and Lucas Oil Studios. <laughs> Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Now, that's a good-looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire, over 20 years with the freaks, and of course, General Tire delivers. For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has been solving some of the most difficult mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial industries. From our original core four products, heavy-duty oil stabilizer, power steering, stop leak, transmission fix, and fuel treatment, we have now developed over 400 custom products to help solve some of the world's toughest mechanical issues. Go to lucasoil.com to see what we have in store for you. Lucas Oil. It works. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAV TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing, only on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Cashback is not available on gas in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Susan, I'm sorry I'm late. Traffic is terrible. It sure is. But on top of that, gas prices have been skyrocketing. I can't believe how expensive gas has gotten recently. Prices at the pump are up, but I never pay full price for gas anymore. I just use the free Upside app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the Upside app? Yes, I get real cash back every time I buy gas. And does that actually add up to anything? I've made around $200 
dollars. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free Upside app now. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code BUY for an extra 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first fill-up. You can cash out any time right to your bank account, to PayPal, or any gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code BUY for a 25 cents per gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code BUY for 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first fill-up. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. 800-215-6818. 800-215-6818. That's 800-215-6818. David was in big trouble with the IRS. At first, I didn't owe that much, but after this year, it was out of control. Then David called Get a Tax Lawyer. Right away, they were like, oh yeah, looks like you're qualified to save Get a Tax Lawyer went to work. (laughs) Should have called way sooner. Get a Tax Lawyer has helped thousands like David fight the IRS and get a fresh start. Call 800-745-3070. That's 800-745-3070. Listening to Speed Freaks Motorsports Radio Redefined. Freak Nation, go to GeneralTire.com now through the end of April. You've got nine days, eight days, seven days, regardless of when you're watching this. End of April, where you can qualify for up to 70 bucks back Visa prepaid card when you buy four qualifying tires from General Tire. That's right. Go to GeneralTire.com, find out where you can buy your tires and what tires you can buy to qualify to get up to 70 bucks back with the Visa prepaid card from our friends at General Tire. Jesse Love's been coming to the Freak Nation for the last three, four years when he was kicking butt in the ARCA series, working his way up through there. And they got the big gig with Richard Childress Racing this year. Sat on the pole a couple of times, a few times, and of course with uh, his buddy Austin Hill over there. Uh, both of these guys, uh, what a duo with RCR in the Xfinity Series. Caught up with him after his win at Talladega. Uh, emotional guy, mm. most of the time off camera. It's Jesse Love now in the Freak Nation. So Jesse Love in the Freak Nation, and Jesse, I asked you before. Going live, have you seen the video of your crew celebrating? And, of course, you said no. Well, leave it to the Freak Nation to grab the video of your crew as they celebrate. (laughs) Chris Bass. That's awesome. Isn't that bananas? Yep, it's great. Jesse, we've known what you've been through to get to this point now. You're winning Talladega, and watching your crew, friends and family celebrate, that's a crazy brotherhood, sisterhood of celebration for your win and how you got here. Absolutely. You know, we've all been through a lot. I've been through a lot, and every single one of those guys has been through their own battles. And uh, and kind of, honestly, just as I envisioned it, kind of, you know, Chris Bass out there with the pit crew guys, Don John getting excited, Stockman probably crying, pit crew guys doing their bro thing, and then my car chief bug just stone cold killer like he's done a thousand times. Uh, like everything was kind of in order, so it was, it was pretty funny to to see it play out just how I thought it was going to. Talladega is such a strange place, but beginning, middle, end, when did you realize that you actually had a shot to win here at Talladega? Um. I think, uh, I don't know. I think no matter, like right when you get on the racetrack, you feel like you have a shot, especially when you're in like me and Austin Hill's shoes with the cars right. that we're driving. Um, and I felt just like a very calmness about myself the whole weekend um, that I feel like I haven't felt before. Um, kind of just very loose and, and out on the boulevard and hanging out with everybody and um, still got to bed early, but going to the dirt track and, and see my buddy Max McLaughlin win a race with Outlaws. So, um, again, I think a lot of that comes from 
um, the Lucas Oil Power with our ECR engines, with the J-Born Chevys as fast as they are right now. Um, just all that together, including the confidence in my team and my spotter and everybody, um, it goes a long way for myself. And uh, I felt just like I kind of knew what I needed to do this weekend um, and what the moves were going to be. And um, at the same time, not really over care, not overanalyzing anything, knowing that you got a shot to win, you got probably just have a sh- more than enough of a shot to wreck. So um, just kind of finding some peace and comfort and not overanalyzing or over caring too much. Is that advice or is that help coming from teammates like Kyle Bush or Austin Hill or Richard Childress himself saying, Hey man, don't let the wins or losses define you chill a little bit, take it off the track, enjoy yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I get pushed really hard here at RCR to, to do well and, to, and perform and everything, but at the same time, Uh, they have a lot of confidence in me and a lot of belief in me. And I feel like because of that, yes, there is the pressure that I, man, these guys believe in me and they are who they are. I got to go perform at the same time. I, they do a really good job of finding, finding that comfort within me that I feel confident in my own shoes and my own skin. And, uh, and that helps me kind of just go be myself uh, on the racetrack. And and before I get in the car, Jesse love here in the freak nation and, Jesse, whether it's inside the walls of Richard Childress Racing or here at the track at Talladega, nine-year-old boys cheering for you, get the feeling that there was pressure for you to win and to win early. Did you Did you feel that? Does no, that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I didn't think I had to go win or like, I don't think too much like that. Um, my thought process is always the same, just go do the best job that Jesse Love can do. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I do do that, and we're having a good day with our car and with our team and pit stops and everything, that that's enough to win. Um, and I believe that, right? So I just kind of focus on myself the entire time I'm at the racetrack of just go to the best job that Jesse Love can do today and uh, and put all my faith in my team and my guys. Um, but, yeah, there definitely is that pressure, but I just feel like pressure has always been something that um, I've used really well. Um, and I kind of just seem to thrive under the pressure atmosphere a little bit and it's always a feel like a good thing when i have that around when things are too chillaxed and everything um then i just kind of get spun out of my own head what do you mean chillax i know what chillax means to me but to you what do you mean by chillax like if there's nothing on the line i, I just don't Keep sing, going. i don't feel like i do great when there's nothing on the line um when i come here racing the xfinity series and there's a lot on the line whether it be um, trying to get locked in the playoffs or trying to get, you know, win a championship at Phoenix, whatever it may be. I feel like that's where, where I kind of just seem to do my best. Well, now that you have that win here at Talladega, I would imagine that a big weight's been lifted off your shoulders. feels pretty good, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Freaking lootly. I do right. because I've been thinking about the playoffs too much in the last few weeks. Um, I feel like probably the last two weeks where I really started thinking about, I got to get locked in the playoffs here. Um, and that partially, again, kind of plays into the, you know, the uh, pressure cooker. And I feel like that's where I do well. So um, it's a blessing and a curse for sure. But I feel like I just really need to get locked in so I can kind of go loosen up a little bit out on the racetrack and be a little bit better at this at the intermediate stuff. Um, kind of, I was a little bit too conservative to start these races so far, Vegas and Texas. And I think that's because I'm focus on not wrecking out early. So now I don't care. I'm going to go, go for broke every week and drive the heck out of it and try to win these races, win stages and get playoff points. And one other thing you were talking about the press conference about wearing your emotions on your sleeve. I don't, I don't see your sleeves. I don't see your emotions. No, I mean, I think I, I think I'm showing it. Like, I don't, another thing is that if I'm not overly excited, I'm not going to show, I'm not going to fake it. (laughs) Um, you know, right now I feel like I am definitely, um, hasn't 100% soaked in yet. Like it was a surreal experience, obviously crossing the start finish line and doing the burnout and everything. And, um, and now I'm just, you know, ready to get home and, and kind of look it all back on TV. There's honestly some things now that I start thinking about is why I've probably calmed down. There are some things towards the end where I probably could have done differently mm-hmm. and, and been better. And um, it could have gone either way there at the end with kind of the decisions I was making uh, weren't a hundred percent. So, uh, it was it was really cool, and I'm looking forward to go celebrate with my guys on the plane. You got a hell of a fan base, man. This is fun. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing too about Talladega that I love is the is the fan base, and that kind of helps me perform better. I think. Um, again, 
there's some pressure with the fans that you want to do well for them. And um, going out and seeing that firsthand, the boulevard, seeing it firsthand on giving, you know, hats out yesterday and hats and T-shirts and koozies and things like that. Um, like that's the experience that I love and, uh, and that I enjoy. So kind of using that to my advantage right now. And I just enjoy the meet new people as well. And especially at Talladega, I think they got the best fans in the world. So um, that's why I love, I love coming here. And it's not just because of the racetrack. It's also the people and the experience of it. Like I love coming to Talladega. Thanks for doing this, man. Thank you. And Talladega loves you. Statman, he is 19 years old. I was going to ask you, what was he drinking? What was he chugging in Victory Lane? I don't know. I, I was just, while I'm talking to him, who knows what questions I'm asking. A lot of times I'm two or three questions ahead of myself. But a lot of times I was thinking, this guy's 19 years old. What I was doing at 19, it, I, I, can't, I can't grasp what he just did at 19 years old, uh, winning that that race at Talladega stat, man, this isn't a backwoods track. This is a high speed track that this guy won at 19, man. Yeah, I think the bigger issue is, uh, and this may be an obvious answer, but I haven't heard how Toyota let him get away from Venturini Motorsports in Arca to drive in a Chevrolet in uh, Xfinity. Who knows where he's going to be if he go when he goes to Cup. But, uh, yeah, he's a young kid, 19 year old, years old, obviously with talent and obviously comfortable with the media. And a great, yeah, I was going to say a great personality. When I was in Martinsville a couple weeks ago, I was doing a bunch of stuff as the cars were lined up for the Xfinity race. And there was a lot of, bit of downtime, the but they're, the they're cranking, gotcha. They're cranking the music and I went right by his car and then my eye caught him and he's just singing, singing at the top of his lungs. And I'm like, damn it, I missed that. And then he goes, oh, well, I mean, he's just a great personality. I, I want to see that continue. Love him. Freak Nation, a pair of jeans won the IMSA race at Long Beach. And we'll talk to that pair of jeans coming up next. Speed Freaks Pits and... Lucas Oil Studios. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Keeping your pride and joy perfect is as easy as one, two, three. Start with Slick Mist Speed Wax. Simply mist on and wipe off for professional detail or shine. For your tires and trim, there's Lucas Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Spray on and wipe off for better than new look. Then finish her with Lucas Slick Mist Interior Detailer. Just spray and wipe. Easy. Use Lucas Slick Mist Car Care Products and she'll never look better. Fast, easy, and professional. Really, it's sort of like having an extra set of hands. Or three. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire over 20 years with the freaks and of course, General Tire delivers. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV-TV. Monday is All-American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door-banging action of the dirt, MAV-TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four-wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All-American Racing, only on MAV-TV, Motorsports Network. As your power steering pump ages, seal leaks may occur, causing the power steering system to lose fluid. Your power steering system may also develop an annoying squeal, and the steering may become more difficult to handle. By using Lucas Power Steering Stop Leak, you will stop the seal leaks, reduce slack in rack and pinion, eliminate the squeals and hard spots in your power steering system. It is guaranteed to stop seal leaks for your money back. Lucas Power Steering Stop Leak. 
It works. Freak Nation, head to your local General Tire dealership now to check out the latest additions to their product lineup. The Grabber family of tires are engineered for durability and feature innovative performance features that offer all-terrain capability, blending exceptional off-road durability and impressive on-road performance, all while sporting aggressive styling. For outstanding off-road performance coupled with strong street manners, look no further than General Tire. General Tire delivers for whatever you do in the official tire of Speed Freaks since 2001. David was in big trouble with the IRS. At first, I didn't owe that much, but after this year, it was out of control. Then David called Get a Tax Lawyer. Right away, they were like, oh yeah, looks like you're qualified to say it's... Get a Tax Lawyer went to work. (laughs) Should have called way sooner. Get a Tax Lawyer has helped thousands like David fight the IRS and get a fresh start. Call 800-745-3070. That's 800-745-3070. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. Crash, you're still hanging out in Long Beach, and you had a chance to catch the IMSA race on Saturday afternoon. Not the Trans Am race that we're so used to seeing at the old Long Beach Grand Prix. Yeah, IMSA's been there a long time, too, though. Well, but okay, thanks. (laughs) But you had a chance to catch up with your winners. Do you care to share the story about what happened? Oh, Lordy. Tech is not my friend. It never has been. So, yes, I got a joint interview with... Both drivers, Sebastian Bourdais and Renger Vanderzandy. They both they both drive the car, the Cadillac that won for Chip Ganassi Racing. Right. The two of them have been co-drivers, teammates for a while now. They haven't been on the top step of the podium in almost a year. So yeah, I got them elated yesterday coming out of the presser. They're drying off their trophies and having a good time. Get back to the hotel room last night, mm. getting ready to call it a day. And oh, didn't have any audio in that interview. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good times. So I was in a panic this morning trying to get them both back together. Sebastian Bourdais was doing a lot of driver coaching and was helping the engineers for the IndyCar race today. So there was no chance to get him back. But Ranger very nicely came out and gave me about five minutes of his time before he had to go do some duties with Chip Ganassi Racing. Freak Nation, if you have genes that sound like Ranger Vanderzandy, well, you're like me. It's Crasher with Ranger Vanderzandy, your IMSA winner. Long Beach. Ringer Vander Zandy driving that car across the finish line, finally getting on the top spot of the podium. These guys are second in points. They've had two podiums so far this year, but this one's a win. How did Long Beach come together for you guys? Yeah, I mean, winning a race is always good, you know. So if you ask how the race came together, it's perfect. I mean, uh, you know, winning in Long Beach is always good. Such a classic, iconic race. And, um, you know, the team did a fantastic job on strategy to get me out but then from there on I had the oldest tires of the field and I had to survive towards the end so we made it we made it stick um, grip wise but also uh, win wise so it was nice to, to spray some champagne you know that has to say something though for your driving ability because I wanted to talk to you about the tires everybody changed tires on their pit stop you guys did not were you slipping around how did you handle things in order to stay in the lead not just get in the lead but stay in the lead yeah, you know, it's first of all, track position on the street track is super important. So once you're in front, to get by me is quite difficult from there on on the street track. So we knew that. But at the same time, if they have a lot more grip, or let's say if I push it a lot in the first 50% of my stint, then at the second half of the stint, they're going to get by anyway because they have more grip. So I had to really conserve the tires, make sure that they, you know, I don't need, didn't need a big gap. I just needed to make sure that they are close behind and don't overtake me. And then at the end of the race, we had more or less the same grip. I got a bit more um, a better true traffic, and that's how we won it. Is Long Beach kind of just a blip on the radar for you guys? It's your shortest race in the IMSA season. Are you just kind of like, uh, oh, let's get through it? Or is it one that you really want to cherish because of the history? 
No, it is a, it is one of the classics, one to win. You know, when I go back to Amsterdam, they uh, and I can say I'm born Long Beach. That's a big thing. So, uh, you know, the Long Beach Grand Prix is such a such a historic, iconic race. Um, it's been here with Formula One. Everybody knows those onboard videos. So it's uh, it's a special one to win. So it's not just a United States thing. People overseas they know Long yeah, Beach, sure. not just Indy, not just Daytona, Long Beach. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. I mean, you know, Indy and Daytona is is very classic and uh, you know very important too. So. Don't get me wrong there, but um, yeah, for sure, Long Beach is, uh, is a special one. With the fountain here, with the fans, it was full. The grandstands were all full, so amazing race to win here. Okay, so how does a Dutch guy and a French guy, how do you guys really get together? <laughs> I mean, let's just say, let's take time in the cockpit out of the way. How do you guys really get together, get along? You know, uh, not very good uh, if you talk about, uh, no, no, very good, very good. No, Seb is an amazing teammate. He's, uh, he's one of the best I've worked with. He's so fast, uh, so, so, so honest about setup, you know, and as a teammate, you also need to work together because you're sharing the same car. I think it's different in single seaters where you want to have a little, some cards in your pocket when you want to play it. But we are in the same car. We want to win the same race. So you really have to cooperate. And Seb has been fantastic with that. Very open, transparent, and uh, we're doing a great job together, I think. Oh, you guys are doing a phenomenal job together. This was fun. You got to win. Now, how do you attack the rest of the season? Because you're second in points. You, I know you guys want to get up there again. Your winning feeling is back. Yeah. What's the approach? You know, the approach is simple. We want to win this championship. So a uh, good second place in the championship right now. We want to get on that podium every race. And if we can snatch some wins away, we'll, uh, we'll for sure take it. Just that thought of champagne. It's fun, isn't it? We're going for champagne. <laughs> Thank you so much. There's a little backstory behind this. He did this twice for me today. I really appreciate this. Right. Go have fun at the IndyCar race. Thank you very much. All right. Good dude. Very good dude. Is Kenny even on? What? No, oh, you're no, thinking no. about the genes. You're thinking about the genes. No, There's... it's just you had your baptism. The stat man said in the text. Oh, of, yes. Of getting an interview and not having the audio. We've all been through it. So welcome to the crowd. Yeah. At least at least you didn't tell you. I thought I was working with a pro. You know? <laughs> okay, so I, I remember Kenny's audio baptism was with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Whose was yours with again, stat man? Block. Ken Block. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Significant. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, it's because oh, in the time I was working with a pro. I'll never forget that as long as I live. <laughs> We've all got those, man. Richie, do you have one of those, buddy? Uh, off the top of my head, I believe I'm gonna actually Travis Pastrana. Actually, yeah, when I was when I was in school, I Travis Pastrana was in the Xfinity series at the time, and I was doing some PR work for the track, and so I went up to Travis after a race. He didn't. Why are you looking at the race. computer? I mean, why are you looking? Why aren't you looking at the at the I'm so used to looking at my my laptop when yeah, I talk. I what the hell are you doing? I actually kind of like camera. I actually kind of like that better. It's just a little more intimate. It's like if you're, I'm just kidding. No, it looks like you're reading your response to Travis Pastrana. <laughs> no, to get back to my point. Now that I'm looking at you folks at home, everybody. <laughs> talked to Travis Pastrana after NASCAR's Xfinity race. He didn't do well. It was really great with his time. Got back to the media center. And go. Oh, oops, forgot to hit record. Yeah. Well, nice, you, guy, nice guy, really nice guy. Did you have the huevos to go back and grab it again? No, <laughs> he's probably gone. <laughs> Long gone. I think he didn't, didn't finish the race. Had a really bad race. Mm -hmm. The tricks that we're we're taught, frankly, to get audio and video done nowadays, that uh, the audience has no idea what folks do to get it done. It's <laughs> yeah, and the looks of some of these PR people. Uh -huh. Really? You want our driver to reach 50,000 people in an interview? Come on. <laughs> Should we bother ourselves with this? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I'm not, don't let me talk anymore on that. Mm. So there you go, Freak Nation. Uh, <laughs> let's have a completely off the subject conversation with Richard C. Suave. Again, it's 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 not funny because I'm not laughing. What? What, Richie? Sorry, I'm just making myself laugh over here. Listen, if um, <laughs> if you follow hockey at all, Freak Nation, you know that the Arizona Phoenix don't bring this up again. Tempe Coyotes are leaving for Salt Lake City, and uh, Richard C. Suave owned stock in the. <laughs> Coyotes. Why are, you, are you gonna do this every week on the show just to annoy yes, the crap out of me? You know Kenny, you worked yes. with Kenny for a while. 
So I had to ask Richie. I, I had I forgot that the NBA playoff started over the weekend, or actually last week with the playing games. <laughs> and I'm a I'm a homer, so all things Texas, all things Dallas. I'll yeah, I'm, I'll go for it. I, I didn't watch much of that freaking Mavericks game on Sunday because it was up against IndyCar and uh, and uh, NASCAR. I had no idea that who the stars are playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And uh, Richie, I had to get all my intel on Richie, who were in the playing games. It just things just change, man. We're busy. When, yep. And Kenny is clearly busy on his phone, as he alluded to oh, earlier yeah. in this hour. Nine hours of screen time per day, which I checked my little phone in one of mm -hmm. our breaks. I'm five hours, 30 minutes a day. See, <laughs> Kenny's nine hours a day, allegedly. It's almost twice oh. as much. Wow. If if I'm playing podcasts. <gasps> that counts. There Oops. you go. That's right? why. Yeah, nice thumb up. Like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that would count in your hours because when you're playing a podcast and you're falling asleep to a podcast, whatever you're doing with your podcast, yeah, your screen is up. Your screen is awake. So that counts as time being used. Mm -hmm. So they're okay. We figured it out. And that's Dang five, it. five nights a week. There it is. I'm down to seven hours now. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get to where he's not using the phone at all. Statman's got like negative hours. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you, how do you find out? That's oh, it, how, remi it reminds me every Sunday. I don't know why in the hell I let it do that. It's like, oh, Really? That's how backwards I am. I don't even know how to find out. Flip phone have our statman. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get Statman's goat, just talk tech with Statman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one thing that did come out in this show. We got to break it quickly. A tear was shed for a Jesse Love win. Now you can get off my back about the uh, Buddy Rice win. Yeah. <laughs> Valid. We'll take Shoot it. Shoot the juice to the moose, the stat man. Cut it loose. Yeah. Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio. Redefined. You take car maintenance seriously, and you want to pass on that legacy of care. Use Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer to shield your engine from excessive heat, debris, and friction. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April, four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet, in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire over 20 years with the freaks. And of course, General Tire, delivers the nascar cup series returns to worldwide technology raceway on june 1st and 2nd 2024 the time to get your tickets is now Let's go! Yeah! for only ten dollars down you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the enjoy illinois 300 and the confluence music festival it all adds up to one amazing party Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAV TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing only on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. <laughs> 